This is Jessica Williamson, and you're watching Zap Root. While eating your apple on the way to work, here is something you may not have considered. As it turns out, you may actually be the cause of all that roadkill you've been seeing lately. You might not have hit it, but it still may be your fault. Even though we all think it's okay to throw an apple core out the window because it biodegrades, it generally doesn't get a chance. No, it's not a chain gang of convicted Wall Street bankers that are picking it up, although we wish it were. That apple in the middle of the road winds up attracting animals that would like a little veggie snack, but instead they wind up getting up close and personal with a 98 Toyota Corolla and get pancaked. But the fun doesn't end there. Then another the little animal that just loves meat pancakes takes the business end of a 2002 Prius and pow! Instant roadside cemetery. In the middle of all this economic turmoil, somehow gas prices have still managed to stay low. So what is going on with our good friend oil? Well, the Bush administration signed a plan for offshore drilling on the outer continental shelf, their last day in office. The plan itself wasn't even published till the day after they left office. With all the inaugural hoopla going on, maybe they thought they could just slip it in. But thankfully, Ken Salazar, Secretary of the Interior, stepped in and blocked it. He he said in the biggest area that the Bush administration wanted to drill, the Atlantic Seaboard, which covers 1.7 billion acres from Maine to Florida, our data is 20 to 30 years old. We shouldn't make decisions to sell off taxpayer resources based on old information. So the plan is on hold for now so scientists and several government organizations can find the information gaps and figure out the best way to deal with them. In other news, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals recently blocked Shell from drilling for oil off the Alaskan coast because they hadn't done a proper assessment of the environmental impacts of drilling for oil in an area that is home to several endangered species like the bowhead whale and the polar bear. Alaska's governor Sarah Palin expressed dismay of the situation, citing potential loss of hundreds of jobs. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that her husband's employed by them. And lastly, in big oil news, ExxonMobil was recently fined for failure to cut emissions of sulfur pollutants from smokestacks like they had promised in 2005. Exxon apologized and paid a whopping $6.1 million fine. By the way, $6.1 million is 0.015% of the profit Exxon made last year alone. Yeah, they really taught them a lesson. Want some free stuff? Well, buygreen.com is looking to give it to you. Sign up on our community site, add a blog entry. You can use pics and videos, and the best blog entry this week will receive this. Sponsored by buygreen.com. And don't forget, there's a link in our show notes. And now for some green gadgets. Check out Effigy. It's basically a competitor to the kilowatt. It lets you monitor all the energy usage on your appliances and lets you know how much all that standing in front of the refrigerator wondering what to eat is going to cost you. Want to work for your music? Try the Trevor Bayless Wind Up MP3 player. It comes in 4 and 8 gigs. It's a little larger than you'd imagine, but it's got a damn crank on it. Check out the Sony Ericsson Green Heart concept phone. It has a bioplastic casing, a recycled plastic keypad, and a charger with 3.5 milliwatt standby power. But you'll probably never own one. They just want to show you that they can can make it, not that they will. Is mere solar power not enough for you? Try the Kinesis K2. It's a solar and wind charger in one. With full charge from the sun or the wind, it can power the average cell phone five times over. And you get the added benefit of feeling like it's 1994 and you're carrying around a Sony Walkman. And it's yellow because it's tough. Check out this LED lamp that runs on mud. No, that's not the latest battery technology. It's actual mud. All it needs is a little water every now and then. And if you want to kick it like your grandma did to the 127th power and use a tool that's really low energy and multifunctional, check out the Homo sapien tool. Technically, it should be called the Homo habilis tool, which is an older species of the Homo genus, which was the first to use tools. Homo habilis translates to man the tool maker. That is if you're not one of these fruity people that believes that Australopithecus gahi was the first to use tools about 200,000 years before. Because really, people, that's just silly. Thanks for watching, and come get your caveman on at zapfruit.com. Even though caveman is technically a different species of the Homo genus. Hey, YouTube user, you should subscribe. The button is right over here. Seriously, this button's all over the place.